Welcome everyone. We have some special treats for you over here. We have some politicians. <laughs> but please gather around. I'm Nancy Taylor. I'm chair of the Twin Falls City Historic Preservation Commission and we welcome you here today along with the County Historical Commission and the County Historical Society. We're gonna start out, we have a special treat. This is the state of Idaho's 125th anniversary. It's also the anniversary of Twin Falls in 1904. So we have two um, anniversaries to celebrate. And we have a very special flag here today. It's a 43 star flag that because we are the 43rd state, we have um, Sheriff Tom Carter owns it. So this is it. 43 states and now we have what how many do we have now <laughs> yeah um, Ruth Commissioner Ruth uh, Pierce is going to tell you a little bit about the flag well she kind of stole my thunder so <laughs> um, actually five stars were added uh, July 3rd 1890 and the flag flew for one year because Wyoming was added and so then we had a 44 star flag but but Tom was gracious enough to let us use that today. Thank you. I'd, I'd like you to welcome now the chair of the county commissioners, Terry Kramer, and he'll give you a little bit of um, history. Well, I'm not the chair this time, but I'm here to speak on this. Part of my uh, responsibility as a county commissioner is to participate in uh, the historical portions of the county. So I help with the museum and oversee those kind of things. I also assist in tourism and I also assist in uh, representation on the Chamber of Commerce. So it's really important to me to bring forward uh, Twin Falls and our history. So I'm the only guy with notes, which is kind of frightening. But I'm, uh, but I am, uh, I'm going to tell you that looking back on Idaho, let me tell you, it took a lot of vision to uh, settle in Idaho. If we look back historically to our area here, uh, we were part of the Oregon country. The Oregon country was such a vast area, it wasn't even defined in space. It was like virtually shared by Britain. And by, uh, and by the United States. And it wasn't until um, about 300,000 Americans kind of traveled across the Oregon Trail and settled in Oregon that they decided maybe they better make a dividing line. So after some heated conversation, the 49th parallel was, was decided they would divide uh, Britain and the United States and we became the Oregon country. Our history is very, um, is very rough to start with. Lewis and Clark in, eight, in 1806 came through Lolo Pass, you know, in the Clearwater River country, and it was rough country. And they basically said, you know, we can't get through here with any amount of people. It is rough country. The Hunt Party, we all know, had a really tough time traversing through the southern part of, this, uh, of the state. They crashed and burned pretty badly at Cauldron Lynn, kind of split up their party and said, we'll kind of meet somewhere on the other side of this vast desert. Uh, they did make it, but it was a tough one. Um, the Stewart party came the other way, and they said, well, you know, the hunt, the hunt party made it through. Maybe we can find a better trail because we're certainly not going through northern Idaho because it's too rough. <clears throat> So the Oregon Trail was sort of set up by the Stewart Party. We're talking 1843. Uh, if you read some of the stories, they didn't stay here either. They said Southern Idaho is too rough. Now we know Northern Idaho is too rough because you can't get through. Southern Idaho is too rough because it's too dry, too harsh, has big canyons. Tough area. So 1859, Oregon becomes a state and sort of divides a line. So we, now we have some delineation of actual space. So 1863, in the middle of the Civil War, they discovered that there was actually gold and silver in the mountains in northern Idaho, 
And Lincoln said, you know, maybe we should like put that in the Union part of the collection and we'll keep some of that gold and silver. So they divide it there and Washington was on one side because it wasn't quite as uh, Union friendly and we took over Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho, basically as we know it, as the, uh, as the Idaho Territory in 1863. That entire space had 17,000 people. So they moved the capital to Lewiston, and the first year the guys from Montana tried to get there and said, this is awful, we are not coming across those mountains. And the next year, Montana splits off and Idaho becomes a smaller territory. Still tough country. They moved the, the capital to Boise in 66. So then during the 1880s, we have the mining booms of the central part of Idaho. Uh, they were taking advantage of the riches that they had discovered. Coeur d'Alene was the richest uh, silver mine in the nation in that time. Still, northern Idaho was pretty angry that they had moved the capital. 1887, so we're only three years away from becoming a state, they voted to leave. Said, we have had it, we are gonna join Washington. And uh, so, President Cleveland said, no, you're not, vetoed that, and 1889 they said, okay, we'll give you University of Idaho and you can be happy with that and we can stay together. And I don't think they were still very happy with that, but it was better than nothing. So, now we're to the time when Idaho becomes a state. So we have Oregon that had become a state in 59, Nevada in 65, Washington and Montana right before us, and on July 3rd of 1890 we become a state. Benjamin Harris signs us in, we become the 43rd state. Our state joins the nation from coast to coast with statehood so that you can go across on states all the way across the United States. Now we're a state. And it was like lighting a fire in this area. In the next years, uh, in, in 1900, Idaho had the richest silver mine in the uh, entire uh, nation. We had the largest sawmill at Potlatch and we saw the development of the largest and most successful Cary Land Act projects with reclamation on the rivers of Idaho. Um, that's what has created this wealth down in our valley. It was like a skyrocketing of, of development for the rivers and the water. And I just went through the chronology really quickly of the, the dams. 1915, we start with Arrow Rock. We have American Falls, we have Anderson Ranch, CJ Strike, Lucky Peak, Palisades, Brownlee, Oxbow, Hell's Canyon, Dwarshack, and finally we built the Teton Dam which lasted one year. So all of those others did really well. So I'm going to sum up really quickly to say we are 43 percent federally owned. We are the largest wilderness in the lower 48. We have the longest free-flowing river within one state. We have the deepest gorge at Hell's Canyon at 7,900 feet. We have the, one of the larger waterfalls in the entire United States. We have diverse landscape, tremendous recreation opportunity, world-class resorts. We have a port. We have a naval base. We started with 17,000 people. We have 1.6 million people and great economic potential. What I want to tell you is think of what we were before we were a state and we were a pass-through area. Think of what we've done since then, but think of what we can do in the future because Idaho has riches that are untapped that are gigantic for our future. So it's time for Lee to talk about our valley. talk again sometimes. Well, thank you all for coming out. What a, what a wonderful day for us to celebrate Idaho and especially Twin Falls. It's a, it's a wonderful place to live. Most of us couldn't be happier anywhere else in the whole world. I'm going to tell you a little bit about a man named Ira Burton Perrine. Ira Burton Perrine came to Idaho in 1884. 
and he went up to uh, the mines in the Wood River Valley to make a living. He discovered the mining was extremely difficult, very hard, and he decided there had to be a better way. So he headed south, and he uh, met a man by the name of Charles Wagamot, who lived just above Shoshone Falls down in the canyon. He had a little village, a tent village, and he'd build a raft to get people from the north side to the south side and back and forth. And in talking with uh, Charles Wagamon, he discovered that he asked Charles Wagamon if there was anywhere he could plant trees and grow fruit. Because he thought, you know, if I could provide milk and fruit for the miners, it would be a whole lot easier than mining. And Charles Wagamon told him about American Falls where he could go buy some cows. And he told him about a little spring down here about four miles down river where he could maybe grow some fruit trees. And I.B. Perrine came down right below where we are looking right now and found the Blue Lake. Okay, thank you. Right in on it. All right, right in on it. So uh, I.B. Perrine homesteaded this area in the canyon right below the spot where we stand today. And uh, he started raising fruit trees, and he took milk and fruit to the miners up in in the Wood River Valley. He could sell milk for a dollar a glass. And he became quite a wealthy individual. When he started raising fruit, he really made some good money. And in doing so, he had to travel north. Well, the only way he could get out of the canyon was to build a road. He built that road up the canyon wall by himself. It took him six years with a mule and a Fresno and a shovel to build that road out of the canyon. It's the same road that we use today to get in and out of the canyon on the north side. It's amazing. When he traveled north, he traveled through the town of Shoshone, which is where the railroad was. That's also where the bank was. And the banker had a beautiful daughter, and he decided, you know, if I married the banker's daughter, maybe I could get a loan to do some things. And so he did. He married the banker's daughter, and uh, so he had a little bit of capital. And he came up with the idea that if he would go up to the Cedars, which is about 30 miles east of here, and build a dam, that they would be able to irrigate this whole south side of the prairie. And at that time, it was just grass. A lot of cattle and sheep were grazing in that grass. And he had this vision of making it blossom as a rose. You know, he went back east to Chicago and to Pittsburgh, and he got capital, and he got people involved. And those people became the people that founded this valley. People like Frank Buell. You ever heard of Buell, Idaho? People like uh, Kimberly. People like Murtaugh. And bankers invested in it, and they sold land here to people that wanted to come west and become farmers. And they built the they built the Milner Dam, and they decided then that they could irrigate. Well, you know, it just happens that uh, at the turn of the century, there were about 10,000 Chinese people that lived in this canyon that were prospecting. They got them to come out of the canyon, work, and dig. They built our whole canal system, over 100 miles of canal, with horses and Fresnos and, a, and one steam shovel and lots of shovels and picks. And they built this whole beautiful uh, canal system that we have, the high line and the low line canal. You know, when they got to the Rock Creek Canyon, they couldn't get through it. They thought, how are we ever going to get the water? You know, we're trying to go from east to west, and here's a canyon that runs north and south right in our way. Well, Frank Buell came up with the idea of a siphon. And so Frank Buell and his foundry in Pittsburgh built a siphon that's 12 feet in diameter. And he brought it out on a train in pieces. They transported it from Minidoka to the Rock Creek. They put it all back together, and they turned the water in it, and it worked. We get water, and today, today if you go out to Rock Creek where the siphon comes through, you can see it. It's still working today. It's over 100, it's about, it's over 100 years old. And Frank Buell is the one that built it for us. You know, we've had some wonderful people come here and, and give their lives and uh, their fortunes to make this Magic Valley really the magic that it is. We, are, we owe a great debt of gratitude to I.B. Perrine, to Frank Buell, to Kimberly, to Murtaugh, to Filer, all those men who who came out, had this vision, and made Twin Falls what it is today. And so uh, it's my 
sincere hope that we'll read more, we'll study a little more about them and the things that they did, and really grow to appreciate the people that came before us who gave us what we have today. So thank you very much. Well, good afternoon. My name is Don Hall. I'm the mayor of the city of Twin Falls, and I really want to appreciate or say I appreciate to everyone that came out today, uh, especially under the circumstances of I think it's 150 degrees, isn't it, Nancy? <laughs> Something like that. Um, before I get started on my comments, I want to say uh, some thank yous to uh, individuals. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the vision, the, the hard work, and then where we are today, kind of taking off the two previous speakers. But the vision of today's event was Chris talking to a city council member. He had the vision. Then the hard work began with Nancy and John from both historic preservation committees that were able to put this uh, event on today. So thank you for the hard work and thank you for the vision, uh, Chris. Again, C Commissioner Kramer spoke about the vision really of the past and Senator Hyder talked about those that took that vision, turned it into reality basically through hard work, uh, incredibly hard work. Um, and with your, again, uh, indulgence, allow me to talk about where we are today and most specifically really where the city of Twin Falls is, but this, this, uh, this uh, picture that I'm gonna paint for you could be said about uh, all the other communities within the Magic Valley and the state of Idaho, of course. Oh, one other shout out real quick. We have Dr. Gentry over here from CSI, retired professor uh, of history, which uh, when you're a professor, Professor of history, you never really retire. Okay, he's still working, and so I'm a little bit intimidated. I want to make sure. I hope my facts are straight because he'll straighten me out later. The city of Twin Falls is growing, and in some respects, we are seeing the s similar evolution that our founders did over a hundred years ago. I want to give you kind of a vision of where we are. Since 2000, our community population has grown by more than 30 percent. And by the year 2030, the city's population will be or beyond 67,000 people. I want you to think about that uh, and, and where we're going. It's hard to believe that only 20 years ago, we only had 31,000 people. And for those of us that call the city of Twin Falls our home, we often feel as if the population is maybe a little more than that. Well, frankly, it is. It is much more than that. Um, Aside from uh, seeing a substantial increase of uh, um, uh, numbers of people coming to our community for a quality of life and those kind of things, but they come here for better jobs and a better place to raise their family. And also, we are seeing anywhere on any given day between 15 and 20,000 people coming here uh, who want to come and take advantage of our uh, economy, our, our, our education facilities, our hospitality, and the services that we provide. To the credit of those who built this great community before us, they have helped establish the city of Twin Falls as not only a place where people want to live, but also an economic hub for South Central Idaho and Northern Nevada, where people want to do their business. Our community has stood fast against the powerful force of the recession that hit us recently. When most cities were hemorrhaging jobs at a record pace, the city of Twin Falls was actually attracting new employers, such as Chobani and C3. And, for most, uh, and before most communities were able to get back on their feet, the city of Twin Falls were welcoming other uh, businesses such as Cliff Bar and the expansion of existing businesses like uh, Glambia. And you don't need to look too much further than where we're standing right now to see how strong our uh, industry as far as retail uh, is. Just look around us today. And, and of course the visitor center to my right. Our unemployment rate is currently hovering around 3.1%. This is one of the lowest rates in the whole nation. And to put that into perspective, our workforce has also increased by more than 3% since 2010. That figure represents hundreds of new workers that have come into our community for the, to take advantage of where we are. And like the founders of the community, we were challenged to provide this new population with services like, waters and like water and roads. We also uh, need to find accommodations for this new populations for services that they expect. 
The city of Twin Falls is engaged in ambitious efforts to work with our partners in our community to create a robust trail system that will one day loop around and through the city. We are working with our partners to develop parks and public spaces that are accessible to all members of our community, even those with physical disabilities. And for those of you that have had the opportunity to go to First Federal Park at the uh, Sunway Complex, you know what I'm talking about. William Shakespeare wrote in The Tempest, what past is prologue. We should never forget the heritage of the city of Twin Falls or the Magic Valley. Our cultural and natural heritage define the community we have today and the community we are preparing for future generations. That's why the city of Twin Falls with its partners are investing millions of dollars to replace the deteriorating infrastructure in our historic district. So to further revitalize uh, and, and make it a, a vibrant cultural hub of our community again. We are encouraging sustainability efforts such as recycling and water conservation and the rehabilitation of na our natural resources. These efforts are paying off, folks. Last year, we diverted more than 2,000 tons of material from our landfill east of Twin Falls to be recycled for new products. We reduced our consumption of precious and limited water supplies by 852 million gallons in 2014 alone. And we are working to rehabilitate 450 acres back into wetlands just below us here at Augur Falls for future generations. As Shakespeare said, our past is our prologue, the story that defines everything ahead of us. As, and so, we, so as we grow, we look back to ensure that we do is what all that we do, excuse me, is in accordance with the story that was really started in 1905. And I just wanted to say happy birthday, Idaho. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Please enjoy the rest of the music and uh, visit our farmer's market, please. Thank you. She took me on to work that day to help her till the land. In the afternoon we planted seeds and evening we held hands. In the evening we held hands. Her blue eyes told me everything that a man could want to know. It was that I realized I would never go. No, I would never go. I don't know what changed my mind. In the afternoon we planted seeds and evening we held hands and evening we held hands. Her blue eyes told me everything that a man could want to know. It was that I realized I would never Season evening, we held hands. 